Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and this video is a direct continuation of the previous video where we started off at Brighton Beach on the Moon in the XR2 Raven Star, and our plan is to head back to Earth. So in the previous video, obviously we got up off the Moon, we got into orbit, we circularized our orbit, uh, we replaced our eject plan with the maneuver, and now we're just uh, about a minute away from beginning the burn. So let's go ahead and switch over to the big view unpause the uh, simulator and we're just going to continue on so uh, the begin burn is about one minute out so let's warp time forward and so we have auto center on we got the maneuver over in uh, burn time calculator so it's going to carry out the burn for us so let's go ahead and warp time forward and there we are we're beginning the burn uh, it's not a huge burn but it is you know not super short either, so I'll go ahead and warp time forward to get through the burn faster. And the burn's about done in three, two, one, and cut off. So we're going to turn off auto center. We're going to immediately switch over to the maneuver, turn maneuver mode off. We're going to bring up transects on this side, view our encounter at Earth, and now we're going to do a little bit of cleanup. So our minimum altitude is currently 1,000, so let's go ahead and just input that last little bit of main engine that's needed to get us down where we want to be. And I said about 100 kilometers, I think, sounds good because we know that we know that it's not going to be uh, accurate anyway and we're going to require mid-course correction. Um, ultimately, my goal is, I think, around 60 kilometers. I'm wondering if that's too deep in the atmosphere, actually, for coming back from the moon. Uh, we'll, we'll think about it as we go forward. So let's bring up Orbit MFD and let's reference the Earth because that's where we're headed. And uh, let's just warp time forward. Currently, time to the periapsis at, periapsis, periapsis at Earth is a meaningless number. So let's get out away from the moon. And this number will update eventually and start making sense guess it probably makes sense now, so it's 800,000. Alright, let's uh, continue on. And let's go a bit faster. I just don't want to overshoot, because I've definitely done that. I've slung right past Earth, and or just crashed right into Earth, because I was under too much time warp. But I think we're okay to be at 10,000 now. We could probably even go more, but I'm not... Um, yeah, we can go a bit more, but let's be very careful with that one. Let's get down to uh, 150,000, just kind of an arbitrary number. And let's uh, take a look. So currently, uh, Orbit at least is saying that our periapsis is going to be 1,000 kilometers below the surface. It's a bit much. Let's see, if I warp time forward at 100, let's see what's happening with that number. Okay, so it is trending upwards. But uh, I think we were very inaccurate. I think TransX was very inaccurate with our burn. So let's do a mid-course correction. All right, maneuver mode on. Um, yeah, maneuver mode on. Let's view over. Um, let's switch the variables over to prograde. Let me actually get... Uh, well, no. Okay, so let's just see what happens if we add in a bit of prograde with our hypothetical PED. It's going. You know what, though? We probably wouldn't be better off with, like, outward. So let me actually reset this for now. Switch over to the. Um, the, also, the other thing I want to do is change the date out into the future. So let's go, so we're currently at 93.45, let's go with 93.70 or something like that, something like that. And there's our outward variable. So let's see what happens as I add an outward. I think that's actually having a much quicker impact, which makes logical sense to me. So that's our hypothetical PED. And that's going to give us a minimum altitude. Let's uh, bring it, because it was trending upwards, so let's put it at like, you know, just like right at the surface, basically. Something like that. 
and that's going to come at a cost of 36.43. So I just really quickly want to compare that with Prograde, but I'm pretty sure that's going to win. So let's reset and let's go to Prograde. And 39. Yep. Yeah, okay, definitely, without a doubt. And that's what I would expect. So I'm glad that what I expect is what's actually true because it's not always the case and we said it was what 30 something 40 30 40 something like that and we're gonna go again just right somewhere you know somewhere just above the surface because the uh, hypothetical was uh, tending to go up a bit all right let's go ahead and just do this burn so let's view over to target and change through our variables from here, I'm not sure which way is faster. Looks like going backwards was faster. And we'll, yeah, we'll just take care of this burn manually rather than bringing it into a burn time calculator because it's not a huge burn. I almost missed that. And burning. And we'll kill the burn now. Rotation, translation. And do the cleanup here with uh, translation, getting it down, you know, roughly there. Turn off auto center. Switch over to maneuver. And we want to turn maneuver mode off. And yeah, that's pretty good. And you can see again that number is uh, tending to go up. So what I'll do now is. I will warp time forward until, until time to periapsis is half of what it is right now, so about 75,000. And then we'll just uh, reevaluate how things are. And it looks like we just crossed over, so Earth is the strong gravitational influence at the moment. So about, about here. And our minimum, minimum altitude's gone all the way up to 181. And I don't think it's going to change drastically going forward. So what we can do, if I just go into the prograde position and now turn off the prograde autopilot, go ahead and hit kill rotate. So I know that if I do a slight inward burn, it's going to bring down my minimum altitude. So I don't have to worry about setting up a maneuver. I'm just going to press one while I'm in linear translation. And now I'm going to try to get my minimum altitude more in line with what I actually want it to be when I get back to Earth. I might go a little bit lower, like let's go down to 55, let's go down to 50, because I think that as we move forward, that number is still tending to go up. So let's cut this in half again. Let's go down to about 37,000. And you can see our minimum altitude is tending up. So about in this vicinity here, go prograde again just to get uh, just to get in the orientation that I want to be in. Kill rotate, and once again, I'm just going to do a bit of the inward. It gets more costly to do this the closer I get, but it's still quite cheap. So I'm thinking, I'm also trying to d decide how it is I want to do my braking because by far the most, the fastest way to do it was to <laughs> uh, invert the vessel nose down and, you know, I can't even put my hand, but like if this is the back of the XR2, you know, we're coming into the atmosphere like that. It is so much faster, but I do not trust myself to be able to pull off that maneuver um, anymore. So, and the thing that sucks about doing it the other way is that it takes ages, but it's much safer. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can just use the full power of the main engines to do a braking burn at Earth, like a Earth orbit insertion at an absurd cost of you know, 4,000 delta V or something like that. Uh, the, the 
the advantage of that is that it's safer, it's faster, but I rob myself of the opportunity of learning atmospheric braking once again. Um, I tell you what, for this particular mission, I'm going to say the focus is going to be on the landing and not so much on the atmospheric braking. So that being the case, let's plan on arriving back at Earth at a reasonable orbital altitude of around... We know we're going to land, so we don't need to be at 300 or 400 or anything like that. So let's just be a little bit above entry interface. So let's say 150. And we'll just use the full power of the main engines to do braking. Again, I'm robbing myself of the opportunity to uh, experience atmospheric braking, but that it takes a really long time to do it the way I was planning to do it. So we'll just uh, do it the, the brute force, absolute beginner way. All right, let's cut our time in half again. Let's get down to, what would that be, 24? Uh, no, that'd be 48, so 20, not even 20, about 19. So let's just go down to 20,000. Makes the math easier. Oh, well, we overshot it a bit. That's okay. And minimum altitude is holding pretty good. Uh, if we really want to be picky about it, just to stay on track. Translation. Rotation. We can get our vessel into the correct orientation and then just translate a bit of inward try to hold and if I go maybe just a couple kilometers below maybe it'll settle up to 150 by the time I get back all right I think we're done uh, I don't think we're gonna have to mess with uh, any more of that so let's plan on going forward to periapsis I'll just check again when I'm at like 8,000 just to make sure my numbers are okay and yeah, they're going to be fine. So we're 6,000, 5,000, 4,000. So we get down to about 1,000, about here. And we're going to go retrograde. And this is going to be an enormous braking burn. And we will bring up burn time calculator just to kind of get an idea of when we're going to need to do this. So. Think about this. Uh, if I press MD, yeah, there we go, and then circularize. So we're a thousand seconds away. We're going to have a two and a half minute burn. I guess it's a good thing I filled up the tanks. And let's make sure we don't overshoot this. So let's get down to a bit closer bit closer yet. All right, getting nervous, so let's go retrograde. And definitely at Earth, our periapsis will be greatly affected if we burn retrograde the entire time. I kind of wish I had IMFD right now. Probably wouldn't remember how to use it even if I did, though. But I can't I can definitely remember if you if your yod slightly out or in it doesn't have a huge impact on your PEA I just can't remember which way to go Rotation. so we're just gonna start the burn and I'll try to I'm gonna watch my PEA and then as we're going through the burn I'll try to yaw accordingly so here comes the burn All right, so you can see my PEA is ticking slightly down, so I want to, let me rotate slightly outward. Okay, so you can see if I rotate slightly out, uh, you know, slightly to the left, it's making my PEA uh, go up closer to my target. So as we get through the burn, and once we pass periapsis, I will then have to rotate inward from the center point. I'm not sure if I have a good memory trick for that. So, you know, before we reach periapsis, we want to be a bit, um, you know, to the left. And then after periapsis to the right. You know, if I'm trying to keep my PEA under control.
So you know, I'm going to try to hit a target of around 150, give or take. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. But again, if I just left the vessel in, in retrograde the entire time, I would be off because this is such a large burn. And we still have a full minute and change to go on the burn. And have we passed peri? So we haven't passed periapsis yet, but we are passing it right now. So I'm assuming that now I'm going to start needing to be rotating more inward in order to keep the periapsis from decaying. So we have 40 seconds left. Periapsis is still under control. And I believe as we get really down toward the end of the burn, I have to rotate massively to keep the burn under control, or to keep my periapsis under control. In fact, I might actually cancel the burn with just a few seconds left. Yeah, I'm going to cancel the burn because I started seeing my periapsis getting affected big time. So let me rotate here. And let me try to just finish out this burn manually so I can keep my periapsis under control. So you can see it's climbing a bit, which is fine. Translation, rotation. And I'm going to start rotating just a bit this way. And the reason this is happening is because I'm not at periapsis anymore, so I'm, I'm after it. So in order to get the same kind of maneuver that I would normally get when I'm right at periapsis, I have to be slightly inward or outward. So we're at 150, holding good. So I need to go back a bit this way. And we're getting really close now to a circular orbit. One seven. It doesn't, and it won't have to be perfectly circular. Okay, so let's go with that for now. And now we are, uh, we're, we're circular enough for, because all we're going to do is land anyway. All right, so let's, uh, let's bring up map MFD really quick. And let's change our display over to orbit plane, hit OK. And let's uh, pick a, a landing site. I was thinking Cape Canaveral, so let's actually just go with that. All right, and it looks like Cape Canaveral will be in the sun for the next uh, few hours at least. So, all right, and we are currently, I actually don't know what my inclination is, six degrees, so I think I'm, I think I'm rotating, nor I think I'm orbiting normally which is coming out of the west, going east, I think. All right, let's, uh, so let's go ahead and call that good enough for this part. So let me switch, let me pause the simulation. Let me switch camera views over to the overlay. So we're back at Earth. Uh, we have a circular orbit. We use the full power of the main engines to get into orbit. Um, again, I would normally never do it that way because it's a huge waste of fuel. But uh, I, wanted, I want my focus for this mission to be on, on getting back to the Earth from the Moon. So check, that's accomplished. And then I want my other focus for this mission to be uh, landing on a runway on Earth. 
So uh, atmospheric braking is a, is a focus that I'll save for some other video. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here, and I will see you in the next part.